Paxton, you have said when we look outside ourselves, all we ever see is a reflection. The other thing I've heard is that the veil is getting thin between the world of spirit and the 3D world that's familiar to most of us, and what we're seeing is a reflection of ourselves. It's an easy opportunity to be overloaded these days. Can you shed any light on this, or is the question itself so foggy that uh, there's nowhere to go with it? (laughs) The whole thing about um, reality, we're at a point here where we're in what we call the shift or the awakening or uh, whatever new agey buzzword you want to use for uh, what's happening right now. But we want to expand our belief system. We want to get rid of old beliefs that no longer work. And we want to open ourselves up to believing in a more expanded format, believing that all things are possible now. We were told that 2,000 years ago and 2,000 years before that and 2,000 years before that. Master teachers have always said that and they demonstrate that. They do superhuman feats. So we're not restricted here. So we want to expand our belief system. So good places, lots of good opportunities here to expand our belief systems. If we just look at some of our phraseology that we use these days, talking about everybody is one, what does that mean? Well, we're, we're kind of coming to see that. You're having the same thought I'm having at the same moment. There must be some connection there. We hear something, we see something, that triggers a thought in our head about another person and 10 minutes later we walk into Starbucks and there they are. Having all these coincidences, all of these random uh, events happening, which obviously are not random. Uh, Somebody's in charge of all this. Somebody's planning all this. Uh, So what what are we being taught? What are we trying to attain in terms of Uh, beliefs of understanding. Right. Is it all random stuff that's going on or are these lessons or opportunities? Absolutely nothing in the universe is random. Nothing has ever been random. There has never been a coincidence. There is no such thing. This is an orderly universe, an orderly reality. So we want to just Make a little game out of it, maybe. Say, could I believe things like, all reality is in my mind, therefore it can all be magic. I can make it up any way I want to. Could it be that we're all one? Could it be that the normal state of being in the universe is that every thought anyone ever had was available to every other entity in the universe? Could it be that my family is so much vaster, larger than I ever thought possible. If there's only one, then my family is everyone that exists in my household, in my town, in my country, in my world, in my solar system, in my universe, in all the universes that exist, in all the parallel realities that are happening simultaneously. No time, no space, no distance, no requirements to travel. Everything is a wormhole, instant access to any place, any time, anything. So if something is happening, is it possible for it to happen outside of me? If anything is happening, any event, any situation is occurring, Is it possible for that to occur outside of me? If it is, then there is no oneness. Then we are not one. We are not bonded. We are not the same. If there's oneness, then I have access to absolutely everything, everybody's mind, everybody's thoughts, every place, every moment, everything possible in existence. Now, that hardly scratches the surface in terms of how expanded and what oneness really means from a cosmic point of view. From a cosmic point of view, we can't even go there. Our minds can't, would be totally boggled to try to comprehend what's going on. So we go a step at a time. 
we expand a little bit at a time. So we're moving into a realm. Not unusual. We have to remember that the Earth cycles, goes through cycles. Our universe goes through cycles, right? We've been here before, many thousands of years ago, but we've been here before. So we're going through a place where the limitations that were known for the last 50,000 years are not going to exist anymore. Nobody even appearing to be subject to the wishes of somebody else. Nobody appearing to be victims or harmed. No thought of disease. Nothing except beauty, joy, fun, love, exploring, having a good time. And that's what's really ahead, if I could use that word, or that's what's available? It is. It's what's ahead and it's what's available. And it's important to point out the energy that is engulfing us right now. One thing about 2012 that's really true is the energy is it's not like it was 10 years ago or 100 years ago or 1,000 years ago. We now have the opportunity to exceed any limits that we ever had before. So this is the time to awaken. People who want to do life the same way they did it last year, this year, are missing a golden opportunity to have an awakening, have an epiphany, see life from a whole new point of view, understand they are not limited, pull out of pain and struggle as a normal way of living, and move into the adventure, move into the excitement, move into the joy of learning. You used the word epiphany, and I probably have epiphed once or twice, but when that happens, what kind of an experience are you talking about? Like a near-death kind of a thing, or could it be much less or much smaller than that? Oh, they happen all the time. They happen as brief insights, a wow, and oh my gosh, look at that, that kind of experience. And certainly, book after book is being written about near-death experiences these days. We're understanding that 10% of the population, perhaps, has had a near-death experience or another experience that was similar, that shocked them, that, that, that jolted them, that grabbed them by the shoulders and shook them and made them realize life is not what I thought life was about. All the things I was worried about are irrelevant. I should be looking for love, light, forgiveness, joy, happiness. I should be offering my service to humanity that I've been withholding. So it is, it is a time of epiphany. That's the energy. But we have to open ourselves up to it. Now, sometimes people don't open themselves up and the universe comes and gives them a good slap in the face with a disease, with a life-threatening condition, with something. And we say, oh, uh, I guess I'm supposed to be looking at something else. I guess I'm not supposed to be just trying to make money or get by or, or have a better house or whatever, right? That's not what life's about. I also know something you're not about is giving advice, but I'm going to ask you for more of it. For people that are in situations that are very uncomfortable or feel awkward now, maybe a few years ago it was okay, but now it's almost painful. What would you say to those folks? Well, if you like misery, sure. But if you want to get out of it, first thing I'd do is say, why me, God? I'd start asking questions. I'd start saying, hey, I'm not supposed to be separate from the rest of the universe. Where are all my helpers? Who's helping me get through this? What's going on here? Why would I be having this experience at this time? Let's start asking some pertinent questions. The, that's what the universe is trying to get us to do. They're trying to get us to see, hey, there's a step you can take here. Okay? You can move towards freedom, towards peace, whatever. Uh, sometimes I recommend the yellow pad procedure to people. I think this is a good one for everybody. But anytime life is feeling hard, difficult, painful, first of all, you know the universe is trying to get you to make a change. The universe is trying to get your attention. So the universe is saying, wake up. Okay? So I would get out the yellow pad and start writing down, what do I think the purpose of life is? And no excuses, 
No saying, oh, nobody knows that. No, nope. you've got some opinion about it, whether you know it or not, and it's controlling your life. What do I think the meaning of life is? What are the most important things in life from my point of view right now? Right? What would I be doing if I could be doing anything in the world right now? Okay? And you'll find your list does not match your life. You know, the list just absolutely does not match the life. And so you say, how can I change my life to match my list? Okay. So it's all up to us. We have to ask the questions. We have to ask for help. We have to look to new insights that we didn't have before. We have to understand that I don't know anything. I have no idea what life on earth is all about. And I'm ready to learn. I'm opening myself up. Tell the universe you're opening up. You want to be shown. You want to hear the answers. You want to see the answers. You want it right in your face. Get adamant with the universe. Wake me up. Listen to your inner voice. You have an inner voice. We cover it over with our mental chatter. But stop the mental chatter. Stare at a rose until you hear a weird, unusual inner voice telling you what life is all about. This is like an internal inventory. It's, it's looking within to find out what our own deep values are? Yes. Nobody can awaken you but you. This is a self-guided trip to a place we never left, a journey without distance. This is what it's all about. It's what we've been leading up to for 100,000 years. Might as well not let it pass you by and have to take another 100,000 years to get back here again. More on the web at notimeforkarma.com.